Hi, this is Combining Sentences with Mr. Taylor. Let's talk about why you would even want to combine sentences in the first place. Well, first off, we do it all the time, and otherwise, if you didn't, things would get pretty boring. Check this out. The sun went down, the street lights came on, the kids went home, the dinner was ready. On their own, these are four absolutely perfect sentences. But when you combine them in a list like this, it gets a little bit redundant because it seems to say the same thing over and over again, and that's just boring. But we can fix that by combining them into one sentence. When the sun went down, the street lights came on, and the kids went home because dinner was ready. Isn't that a lot easier to read? When you're combining sentences, there are basically four ways to do it. First, we have our simple sentences. That's when you have one independent clause, and that's your typical kind of a sentence. When you're ready to get a little bit more complicated, you have your complex sentence. That's when you have one independent clause and one dependent. Then we'll talk about our compound sentences. That's when you'll have two independent clauses joined together. Then when you're ready to get really fancy, we'll talk about our compound complex sentences. You'll have two independent clauses and at least one dependent clause to go with them. First, we'll talk about our simple sentences. That has one independent clause and I am, that's as simple as a sentence can get. You have a pronoun, which is taking the place of a noun, in this case for your main subject, and you have the verb am as your main verb, also known as a predicate. That's pretty simple. We can get a little bit more elaborate, though, and still have a simple sentence. Take this one, for example. This has every letter in the alphabet, but it still only has one subject and one verb. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. We have fox for our subject and jumped for our verb. Now, anytime you're going to take and combine a verb and a noun, you're going to end up with a clause. But we've still got to talk about the difference between the different kinds of clauses. We have independent clauses and dependent clauses. And here's how I like to think of them. Independent clauses, those are like grown adults. They're able to take care of themselves, and as a sentence, they're able to stand on their own without any extra help. A dependent clause, though, is more like a baby. A baby can't take care of itself, and a dependent clause is not going to be able to stand alone as its own sentence. Here's an example of an independent clause. She found power and her independence. It's got everything you need. She is going to be your subject, and found is going to be your verb. But when you add something to the beginning, like because, that's when your sentence becomes dependent. Now, I'm not just talking about because. There are tons of other options to start your sentence. So, for example, we could start this one with after, or although, or even once. Now, each of these are called your subordinating conjunctions. That's the fancy word for the way that we start these sentences, because when you start a sentence with one of your subordinating conjunctions, it becomes what we call a subordinating clause, which basically means the same thing as a dependent clause. When it comes to our subordinating conjunctions, we have tons of examples, and here is just a small list of some of the most common ones. Now notice these are all one word, but you can even still combine several words uh, together to be your subordinating conjunction, such as even though or by the time. So we'll talk about our complex sentence, because that's when you combine one independent clause with one dependent clause. We're still going to start off with nouns and verbs, so for nouns, let's take moms and kids. And for our verbs, let's take bake and clean, and we'll add a little bit more information. Moms bake cookies, and kids clean their rooms. Now, if we add a subordinating conjunction, we can combine these sentences into one complex sentence. So, for example, if we take the subordinating conjunction when, the sentence becomes mom bake moms bake cookies when kids clean their rooms. Now, mom bakes cookies is still going to be its own sentence if it were on its own, so that's going to be our independent clause. But now that we have when kids clean their rooms, that can't stand on its own anymore, so it's going to be our dependent clause. Let's take a quick note on punctuation. You're going to want to use a comma after the dependent clause if it comes before the independent clause. So for example, the parts of these sentences that are in blue are going to be our dependent clauses, and we know this because they start with our subordinating conjunctions, like when, after, and because. So as far as commas go, we're going to need a comma, no comma, a comma, and a chameleon. Just kidding. But let's talk about our compound sentences, because that's when you're going to combine two independent clauses. 
You'll still have nouns and verbs. We'll still even use the same ones. Moms and kids for our nouns and bake and clean for our verbs. We'll even still use the same additional information. But this time, instead of adding in a subordinating conjunction, we'll add in what we call a coordinating conjunction. In this case, we'll add in and. Now we can't just add in a, sub a coordinating conjunction on its own. Technically, you would still need to add a comma with this one. So we would have mom bakes cookies and kids clean their rooms. So let's talk about the way that you can combine two independent clauses. Now two independent clauses, they're both adults, but they still need something to join them together. When two adults come together into a relationship, such as a marriage, they're going to need a wedding ring. But in our sentences, things that can act like wedding rings would be our coordinating conjunctions. You might know some of these as the fanboys. The fanboys, of course, this stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So we'll talk about the ways that you use these to combine the sentences. We'll take these two separate sentences, roses are red and violets are blue, and we'll talk about the ways to combine them. First, like we've already talked about, you can use a comma and a conjunction. Roses are red, comma, but violets are blue. You could also combine these sentences with a semicolon. Roses are red, semicolon, violets are blue. And there's a third option that's really about the same as the last option we just talked about, and that is a semicolon plus a transition plus a comma. This will look like roses are red, semicolon, however, comma, violets are blue. Roses are red and violets are blue, the things that we have on either side of what we use to combine them will still be their own sentences on their own if they're separated. That's how we know that they're still independent clauses. An easy way to think about this for some people is to picture it like a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, the smallest part, we have our simple sentence. It's just going to be made of its subject and its verb. Then as we get more complex, we're still going to have an independent clause made up of a noun and a verb, but now we're going to add in a dependent clause. And as we go down, we'll get our compound sentences. Those will have two independent clauses, but they'll need something in the middle like a semicolon or, in our analogy, a wedding ring. Then. When we get to the bottom of the pyramid, it gets even more complicated when we have our compound complex sentences. So we'll take a look at those. Compound complex sentences have two independents and at least one dependent. So for example, we can take these independent sentences on their own, roses are red, violets are blue, and daisies are white, and we can combine them in different ways. So for example, we can say, although roses are red, which is going to make roses are red into a dependent clause, and then we'll combine Violets are blue and daisies are white. These are still two independent clauses, but the way that they're combined with the comma conjunction brings them together into the complex, sorry, compound part of the sentence, and then although roses are red at the beginning, brings in the complex part of it, so we have a compound complex sentence. Now, these dependent clauses can pop up anywhere, not just at the beginning, they can pop up even in the middle. So we could say roses are white, while violets are blue, but daisies are white. Now, violets are blue has become our dependent clause. Now, let's talk about a couple of things that you're going to want to avoid when you're combining sentences. This is where it gets a little bit dangerous. Number one, you don't want to leave anything out. Number two, you don't want to overdo it. Here are some examples. First, sentence fragments. And when English teachers see these, they like to write frag next to them. That's when what you have won't work as its own sentence. For example, when the horse ran the track. If you just had the horse ran its track, or the horse ran the track, that would be fine as its own sentence. But now that you have the subordinating conjunction when at the beginning, it can't stand on its own anymore. Another common example is because I love you. Because we've added because at the beginning of the sentence, this can't stand on its own anymore. Now this is why a lot of teachers will tell you, you shouldn't use because at the beginning of a sentence. Well, it's actually fine to do, but you've got to know that now you have a dependent clause and you need an independent clause to go with it to complete the sentence. Another common mistake is what we call comma splices. Now these happen when you forget to add in your conjunction when you're combining two d independent clauses. So for example, I need to use the cell phone, I am expecting a call. You could have used a semicolon here because the two sentences on both sides are closely enough related. 
However, you can't just use a comma without the conjunction, and you can't use a conjunction without the comma when you're combining sentences. And one more mistake is when you overdo it, and you end up with a run-on sentence. Here's an example. After I came home, I raided the freezer for ice cream, and I found vanilla, but we did not have any chocolate. We have, I raided the freezer for ice cream, and we have, I found the vanilla, and we also have, we did not have any chocolate. Those are three independent clauses, which is way too many for one sentence. It seems to run on forever, and that's why we call it a run-on sentence. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining me for Combining Sentences with Mr. Taylor.